my name's Sean Enright. I am an American expat living in Thailand. Uh, I've been here 20 years. Uh, when I was about 19, which was in 1996, um, I got up in the middle of the night to use the restroom and making my way back to bed in the middle, in, in the darkness, uh, blindly, I managed to fall on a glass and I cut an artery in three. And um, I didn't, I didn't feel <laughs> the damage I've done. It was in the dark, right? But uh, I, I, in gathering myself, I reached, I was feeling on the floor to, to make sure I didn't step on broken glass because I, I had an acute awareness that my shin hit this glass of water I had brought up with me and put on the floor when I was taking my clothes off to, to go to bed, you know? And uh, when I was feeling around on the floor, I felt like a warm hose spraying out my leg. And um, because of the job I had at that time, I had first aid and CPR training. I knew what I'd done. Uh, I, this was after my first year in university, so I was back at my parents' home, um, and I, you know, immediately screamed for my mom. I'm a mom. I was a mama's boy, um, and then oh, I locked my door uh, because I'm a teenager and I it's summertime and I'm sleeping naked, <laughs> so I I got to get out to the hallway and. Uh, I got myself up, hopped across the room and out to the hallway. And I, I can only imagine what it was like for my parents. My dad was like, let me get some clothes on. We'll get you in the car to the hospital. I, and I said, no, I'm not going to make it that far. Call an ambulance. I laid down and pretty quickly, all the strength I had, I was focusing on breathing. And then I, I, I knew I was dying. I mean, there were, and there was no like, fear about that i just moment to moment was doing what i had to do and then um at some point there was no more energy and i stopped breathing and it just skipped from sean dying on the floor to uh there was no sean anymore there there was uh pure consciousness but there was nothing to be conscious of except being um there were no none of the other four senses not no hearing no sight no taste no smell there, there was no body there was there was no two things it was singularity and the experience was divine love and there was no sense of time because time is a measure of space right and there was no two things to have time between so um it was like this perfect balance of peace and and freedom and with nothing to be free from and then the next thing i was aware of was coming back to my body tubes down my nose paramedics next to me asking you know do you know what your name is and do you know where you are and i, I was hypersensitive I, I was kind of aware of everything going on at once the hissing from the air tank there were two sets of uh feet walking on the wood floor on the floor below us and it stopped and then oh here comes two more paramedics with a stretcher at the top of the stairs and um after that uh you know as we were talking before i i really i i experienced kind of for the next six months like a depression um i had been brought up by uh pretty enlightened people who were like, look, you need to choose your own beliefs. They didn't thrust any religious beliefs upon me. There was a time when I was around 11 or 12, I took more interest in, in this concept of God. And uh, I, I changed schools to go to Catholic school. And um, I really didn't find anything in that environment. Um, I did my first confession when I felt guilty. The guilt didn't go away. <laughs> So I, I had kind of written off religion at that point. And, and the near-death experience didn't make me religious, um, but it made me aware that the primary thing that I am doesn't die when this body finishes. And part of the depression was, uh, you know, I grew up in the U.S. It's very materialistic. Um, and that seemed very 
shallow or empty afterwards to me. And uh, this experience of divine love was kind of like, well, that was really fulfilling. (laughs) Like, (laughs) what on this planet measures up to that? Um, You know, and and so at, uh, you know, I was just about to turn 19 when this happened. At that age, I really didn't have a lot of understanding um, that was probably uh, I, there were some spiritual experiences before them, but I didn't recognize them at the time. My mom steered me into, I ended up with a mentor who was teaching me manifestation amongst other things. And wow, I changed my life pretty quickly in the next couple of years. Um, I had a lot of success. I bought my first house, uh, my little red sports car in the parking, and it was still empty. You know, it, it was like, so pretty young, I realized that that stuff, yeah, it can provide comfort, but it doesn't provide fulfillment. It doesn't provide happiness. You know, the, the seeking of, of materialism is the fulfillment of desire gives us pleasure and pleasure is short term and not nearly as uh, fulfilling as where happiness comes from. I um, started traveling. I traveled on and off for the next seven years, looking, doing different spiritual practices, uh, exploring different religions. Um, And I was looking for a practice particularly that would resolve what I was left with from my near-death experience, which was an internal conflict. It was like a new me had been born, but the old me hadn't died, and they didn't get along real well. In that period, I had some, a lot of phenomenal experiences. Um, I was taken to visit my dead grandfather um, by this light being. I I had experience with them twice. Um, I jumped into previous bodies of mine in earlier time frames. um, That were, didn't look anything like this white dude. You know, I've been Chinese, I've been Arab, I've been Viking. And each time in a different body, I felt totally at home, you know. So uh, for for me, these really became uh, vehicles, experiential vehicles. Um, and it, it, those experiences weren't like, ooh, I've had other lives. It, it, it showed me, oh, there's this something that goes, that carries on, that transmigrates between lives. There was a lot of, uh, until I found my core spiritual practice that resolved that, and, and I'll get into what that was, there was a lot of kind of two steps forward, one step back for, for years. <laughs> um, and drugs were involved in periods of that um uh, but i i i was very aware that those weren't real solutions they were it was self-medicating you know um so i mean i i i did i filled myself with light became radiant i i had experiences with energy flowing down through my body i had miraculous healings in very short periods I was in states at times where I could feel the energy of a plant and I totally understood why it formed the way it formed. Um, A lot of very uh, phenomenal states. And then I, (laughs) I, uh, I was in Thailand and I had been kind of taken in by this family that had a restaurant near where I was staying. And after a few conversations over dinner, um, the husband said, you know, I I think you should try Satipatthana Vipassana. It's a form of meditation. And um, he lined up for me to go on an intensive retreat. And um, it was one of the least enjoyable practices I'd done up to that point. However, the the results I saw, oh, the conflict in my mind is much less now. And 
you know, over the next few months, it didn't come back. And so, I, okay, I'm going to go do this some more. <laughs> and um, over the next 20 years, I, I did five to 7,000 hours of it. And at, at this point, I live in a, a state where um, I don't have thought most of the time. I have a deep peace in myself. Um, joy and happiness bubbles up through that. Uh, there's a lot of irony <laughs> to be seen that I find quite entertaining. Uh, and, and in general, life works really in kind of a synchronistic flowing way now. Um, I don't have resistance. It doesn't mean my life is perfect, right? Because uh, life is going to do what it's going to do. It's, it's more about my relationship to what life brings than what life brings. So challenges arise. Okay, I just deal with them. You know, there's not a resistance to them. Oh, it's not. This isn't what I wanted. <laughs> don't don't treat your NDE like it's a that's it it's the beginning it's to to get you awakened but that doesn't mean you're fully awakened you have to start walking a path you know and i i see a lot of people in the groups who they have this one experience and they treat it like that's it no that's just the beginning you you aren't this body there are ways you can start exploring you, you went to another realm for a very short period of time you know and you're in an adjustment stage when you do that right you only understand it from a very narrow point of view so you can learn to leave your body at will you can go explore a lot of different realms you know and be an observer and see things from a wider scope you know, in some of the religions, they talk about die before you die. That's part of what that is. So that when, when this is done, you're comfortable when you're leaving it. You know, so that that's my advice. I, I don't push any practice in particular because I think we are all on our own paths and finding what works for you um, and what your objective is um, I think is really what's important.